Hey folks, welcome to another video. Um, I have finished opening my box of Fallen Empires, and I did not get a complete set, which is very disappointing. I am missing the Ebon Praetor and some artifact shield thing that I can't remember the name of. So, you know, whatever. Um, can't count on that even when you buy a box. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of go through, um, obviously got a lot of cards. I want to go through some of the kind of more interesting cards from the box that I did get. So, um, <clears throat> apologize for the angle here. It's, uh, I'm trying to get all the cards into the shot. So basically, uh, starting with black, the sort of um, theme of the black set in Fallen Empire were the thralls. Each thrall has a different um, kind of ability. Um, you know, they're not terribly interesting on their own, but as with so many things, you can combine them with other cards to make them more interesting. So this is Thrall Champion. I only got one of these. You can see all Thralls get plus one, plus one, including itself, I think, because it is, it is a Thrall, um, which is very interesting. Um, there's also this, uh, to go along with that, there's Breeding Pit, which is basically where you put you pay uh, two black mana to get a free zero one thrall token, and you know, a zero one thrall token, zero one creature is usually pretty useless. But obviously, if you have thrall champion, it's a one two creature, which is much more interesting. Also, um, this Turax Gate card, uh, I think, yes, you need to sacrifice a thrall to keep it alive, basically, and so obviously if you have Breeding Pit, you can sacrifice a thrall every turn for two black mana. The uh, Ebon Praetor also is a 5-5 creature with Trample that requires a creature sacrifice to keep it alive, and it gets a power-up if it's a thrall, so obviously Breeding breeding Pit is very useful for that, and I'm not going to tell you the nickname that we had for Breeding Pit when I was a kid, because it is very dirty. So this is Black Oh, and I also wanted to mention, I mentioned him to Turak in the last video, but um, I just wanted to point this one out because this is the Quentin Hoover artwork for him to Turak, which I think is very cool. It also shows that in Quentin Hoover's, in Quentin Hoover's universe, uh, nobody has any unwrinkled clothing. So there's that. Um, <clears throat> the red set is basically just orcs, um, dwarves, and I'm sorry. Yeah, orcs, dwarves, and goblins. Um, not a whole lot else going on in there, although I did want to point out this one card. It was one of my favorite cards, which is Goblin Warrens. This is basically, um, for three mana, you sacrifice two goblins to put a to put three goblins into play. So you basically get a, a goblin every turn for, um, actually, not every turn. You can use this multiple times a turn, so you can just keep pumping pumping uh, mana into it and get as many goblins as you want every turn, which is a very useful card as long as you don't need your goblins to attack. And the reason it's useful is that there are cards that, uh, well, I mean, obviously having a lot of creatures can be useful, especially in a red deck. If you have a Goblin King, I guess Goblin Chief is the new card, um, all your goblins could power it up. But there are some cards, particularly in the, Fall in the uh, Fallen Empire deck, that require you to sacrifice a goblin. So... Goblin Grenade, five damage to sacrifice if you sacrifice a goblin. Obviously, very useful if you're getting if you have easy access to a lot of goblins. And um, Goblin Surgeon, also you can sacrifice a goblin to uh, regenerate a target creature. Um, I chose this artwork. This is a silly Phil Foglio artwork, and um, I just wanted to point out that this is actually the original Lanoir Elf uh, being operated on by the Goblin Surgeon there. So that's kind of silly. Speaking of Phil Foglio, I also chose this um, <clears throat> this illustration for the Basil Thrall as an illustration, as a an example of the sort of silly Phil Foglio artwork. So I'm messing all these up. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to green. Uh, the whole thing with green was there are some elf cards, lots of elf cards. At least I got them, and then um, I mean, the elves don't really do anything very interesting as a group. But the more interesting, although still not very interesting, green cards are the Thalids. Um, the kind of annoying thing about Thalids is that you need to, they all have the spore, ca spore counter uh, ability where you kind of have to, um, 
you put a counter on them every turn, and then you can remove three counters to do something interesting. And, you know, I don't like planning my turns, my actions three turns out. Um, again, I chose this artwork because this is very silly. It's a mushroom holding a stick. But, you know, um, if you choose to do that, there are things that can enhance that. Uh, fungal bloom allows you to put as many spore counters as you want on your thalids for two green mana. So that can accelerate the thalid effects. And then this guy is a thalid devourer. And if you, um, I don't know, it's complicated, but basically he's useful if you have thalids in play. All right, moving on to white. Uh, just a quick note on Icacian Phalanx. This is an illustration by Kaja Foglio. And, it, and um, it's pretty obvious now, but back in the 90s, my all my male friends and I always had a debate as to whether all of these soldiers in this picture are actually female. And I think it actually is pretty clear that they are because they are all wearing makeup. Nice little feminist uh, message from Kaja Foglio. Why not? Uh, Mycation Money Changer, very useful card. You pay three life into it, <clears throat> and then you add a counter to it each turn, and you can sacrifice it only during your uh, upkeep to gain as many, li as many life as our counters on the card. Which, um, you know, if you plan it properly, it can obviously, obviously be very useful. And then um, probably the best card combination in the white set in Fallen Empire is Hand of Justice and Icacian Town. Uh, hand, with Hand of Justice, you, t you tap it and three white creatures you control to destroy any target creature, which is obviously very powerful. Icacian Town lets you put four white creatures into play <clears throat> for six mana. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, again, one one creatures, they're not even soldiers, they're just they're citizens, um, so they don't get these soldier effects that uh, appear elsewhere in Fallen Empires. But you take three of these counters and this guy, and you've got um, the ability to destroy a target creature every turn, which is very useful. And last, or actually, I'm not, oh, not quite last, but the last color is <clears throat> blue. And as I said before, I'm not a huge fan of blue. Um, the blue set, there's Deep Spawn, which is just a big creature that um, has a lot of weaknesses to it. It is 6-6 six, six Trample, so, you know. Um, so blue is all about the Homerids and the Merfolk. I've given you my feelings on Merfolk. The Homerids aren't much better. Um, just pulled out a couple of more interesting cards here. So here's the basic Homerid. This is the Quentin Hoover illustration of the Homerid picking his nose. I like think that Quentin Hoover realized how stupid Homerids are, and that's why he drew it this way. But it has this weird tide counter effect that is just, again, too much of a pain in the ass to keep track of. Sea Singer is pretty useful. You get to uh, take control of a target creature, although it's only 0-1, so it can be killed pretty easily. And then, um, again, this Tidal Influence card has one of these weird tidal effects that I just find really annoying. Uh, quick word on the lands. Um, Rainbow Veil you know, one you might have any color, but it passes to opponent end of turn. So um, <clears throat> for every color, there is this um, add one or sacrifice to add two. You can see there's one of these for every color. And then also for every color, there's this kind of um, vault type thing where you can put in counters and then um, remove multiple counters to add multiple mana to your pool. So there's one of those for each color as well. Um, Non-basic lands are always a little bit interesting, but those aren't extremely exciting. Um, artifacts, nothing terribly exciting, although I will point out that for just about every artifact, at least in the first few, you know, the first several here, you have to sacrifice them to get their effect, which I find really annoying. Sacrifice Alvin Liar, sacrifice Implements of Sacrifice, which is kind of ironic. And um, this, so this Ze Zelion sword, there's a... Uh, counterpart to this. It's a shield that I did not get in the set, which is disappointing. Okay, just about out of time. So that's my Fallen Empire set, and um, next time I will open something new and different. Uh, thank you for watching.